Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Investor Financing Podcast. Today, we're going to talk all about business strategies. We're going to talk about entities, asset protection, everything that you need to know to set yourself up uh, for success because it just takes one lawsuit uh, because you didn't have any, didn't you have your systems and structure set up correctly. Like, I see so many people buying and doing flips in their personal name and you know, if you just get sued, they're going to take you down versus if you have these different entity structures and you you make it very difficult to be sued. And I think that's kind of the conversation, part of the conversation we're going to have. Please welcome Scott Royal Smith. Today, Scott is the founder and CEO of Royal Legal Solutions, a firm he built to offer tax, business, and legal strategies to clients all over the U.S. and Canada. He continues to educate the public on asset protection strategies to help circumvent lawsuits for his clients, which can basically wipe people out if they don't know what they're doing on these lawsuits. So welcome to the show. This is going to be a great topic today. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on. You know, I, it's, uh, you know, you mentioned it a couple of times, you know, what got me into this was that a friend of mine that lost over $3 million from a single lawsuit because he had all of the assets in his personal name, had a big umbrella insurance policy, no LCs in place. And he had a contract that he wanted to back out of. Uh, he's like, oh, my insurance company will, you know, take care of this lawsuit for me when they sued him for it. They're like, nope, we only take care of simple accidents. When the slip and fall on your property, bud. Look, like, this is you backing out of a contract. And so he uh, he ended up paying big for it. And that's actually what got me really interested in, you know, in asset protection and thinking like, holy smokes, we cannot own assets in our personal name. It's just not safe. It's not smart in the U.S. Uh, to do it that way. So I'm stoked to share all the all the secrets and all the details here today. All right. Thank you so much. This is going to be a great episode because this is like, I get this question a lot. And like, you know, I know over the years, you just keep learning. And like, I've, I interview people like yourself or I'll start absorbing like more of the information. Definitely don't have the same knowledge, but you know, there's a certain kind of strategies we all need in life to succeed. And whether you're you've gotten millions of dollars right now, or you're, you're, not, you're on the come up, these are strategies that the sooner you implement them, the better for you, because it's just going to be a lot healthier. So ultimately, if you're a real estate investor, right, like you're going to usually purchase the property in the in a holding entity and then maybe have an operating entity that runs the business. Do you, your kind of main strategy on like real estate, uh, acquiring real estate, is it is it like a holding company and then like an operating company and a trust that manages this at all? Is it, would you say that is like, probably the top structure for real estate or what are your thoughts here that you can kind of break down for us? Yeah, I think, uh, pretty, pretty close, Bo. So like every, uh, every person, right. That we work with, it's depending upon their asset classes and where they where they live, uh, depends upon like what it is that we end up doing. Right. Um, because the, where they live can depend on taxes. Like if you're in California, you're getting handmade over franchise taxes. So you're using different structures. And if you're operating the rest of the States, um, and if you're a single family home investor, you want to use series LLCs versus if you're into apartments and commercial, you're probably having to do individual LLCs for financing purposes. So everything that we do, like in the asset protection, like realm actually relates to like taxation and financing. It like relates to the business of how do you make money doing that kind of business, right? Um, and that's where you have to understand how all of those businesses work to actually understand, well, here's how the corporate structuring would need to go. At the end of the day, what you're really you're doing is exactly said. There's three legs of the stool, right? There's your asset holding company and compartmentalizing every asset you own. What you're looking for there is a way that if a lawsuit, uh, uh, somebody sues you, they can't get to your assets. If they sue one of the assets directly, like grandma fell through the staircase of one of your properties, she can't get to any of the other assets, right? And that's what we're looking for from an asset holding company from lawsuit protection. It's this the thing called compartmentalization. Secondly, what we're looking for is an operating company that you do like all the front facing work to the world on. And with that, the purpose is to say, well, if somebody, you know, gets angry because of a, a, a lease contract that you had with them or an email you sent them or a contract that you signed with a contractor, we don't want them being able to sue you directly because you have a credit score. You need that credit score to qualify for, for financing. So we want to put an LLC in place that doesn't own any assets and it's completely separate than your asset holding company to be able to shield you from any type of direct attack that could impact your credit score. Uh, and then lastly, uh, the best kind of protection you can get from a lawsuit is a lawsuit that doesn't get filed in the first place, right? How do you do that? Well, what you do is you make it look like on paper 
if anybody researches you, they don't own anything. Because if people don't sue people that look like they qualify for food stamps, it doesn't happen. So you use trust structures, some types of, of a revocable trust tied to a law firm, which makes it where there's a smoke screen where all the information points back to an attorney in a law firm. If anybody looks up Bo, they can't find out any company he, sell, he owns or any assets that he owns. Looks like Bo doesn't own anything. Now, when Bo needs to go qualify for a loan, he can produce as that documentation to the bank. It's a private disclosure. We have no problem with that. It's not on the public record. It's not anybody's going to be able to see that that's looking to sue you. So in these, um, that's the nuts and bolts of it, is you got the anonymity, you got the asset protection, and you got an operating company to protect you personally. And, and then what you guys do, now at your practice, do you actually have uh, tax preparers or CPAs? Yeah. On, on, okay. So- because also a lot of this to do is you're setting up the, the structure and then also what kind of, is this a passive business or is it an operating business? Because that's going to depend on also like if it's a S corp or it's, you know, an LLC or, you know, a regular corporation on how this all like is going to flow for taxation too. So you guys just are really, I hate to say the word one stop shop, but you guys are a one stop shop for, all, for entities and structuring and taxes, the whole strategy uh, all in one. Yeah, I mean, it's really, um, it it's took me like 10 years to get here, right? Of like, how do you build all of these pieces together? Because what, what's really talking about is I've, I've had to build multiple companies. I've had to build a law firm that understand the asset protection. Then I had to build uh, on the corporate side. Then I had to build the estate planning, an estate planning law firm. Totally different firm, integrate those two together. Then I had to build a tax division with CPAs, MBAs, fractional CFOs. And I also have an insurance company and the hairline in 2023, I'm going to start sharing my private deal pipeline with customers coming in. So we're really looking at like a one-stop shop or a fractional family office where we can look at everything holistically and say, great, here is the optimized solution across all disciplines that come into what is wealth, um, wealth management, right? Because what we're looking for ultimately is can we secure the wealth so that way we never have to take a back step in life. And then can we accelerate the wealth by saving money on taxes and getting it better motivated into the proper investments? And then can we save time because of efficiencies of operations and having a full service team? And then my my thinking is, is that's the way that we really create big impact as a company is focusing on those three areas as, you know, saving people like, right, this age old thing, right? Can we save you time and money and help it make sure that you are safe? Yeah. I mean, it's just, we were talking before we went live about like some low hanging fruit tax strategies that a lot of people just, you know, there's like these doctors out there and they make, you know, a million, two million bucks a year and they have no tax strategies. And it's just like, it's amazing that they went to, to school and learned all this information, did their other studies, you know, and had huge student debt, paid it off, make millions of dollars a year and pay like you know, 40% of it away to the government, you know, Uncle Sam. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if they just like came to a group like yours, they can learn some fundamentals where they could get some strategies and some tools where they could pay a lot less in taxes. It's it's like so counterintuitive that people are, are you know, they're, th they're thriving to make as much money as they can, but yet the, they could make a lot more money by just saving that 30% in the tax structures. Well, it's not what you make, right? It's what you keep at the end of the day, right? And that's one of the things that I learned uh, when I actually joined uh, that GoBundance group is at the end of the day, it was like two two major things got nailed in my head that I was like, okay, top line income is like a vanity metric. It doesn't matter, right? Well, the only thing that matters is how much money do I keep and then how much money can I get into investments? And then what is the return on my total net worth, right? That's how good of an investor I really am. It's not like one deal that turned me 25 or 30%. Out of, out of all my soldiers, how well are they working for me like out in the field, right? And and that's where I think it comes into place that everybody really um, needs help. I, I literally haven't ever had anybody come through into like our group that we haven't been able to save them at least amount of enough money on taxes to be able to pay for everything that we do. Is once you understand like how to use private foundations and how can you actually use investments and accelerate the depreciation to offset your W-2 income or to offset your 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 uh, 1099 income, your self-employment income. I mean, you're talking about taking people down into like single digit tax brackets, right? And, and a lot of people can get down to zero over the course of a couple of years of inside of the focus. 
um, such that, you know, tax savings is the single best investment you can make. It's the only guaranteed ROI that you know you're going to make every year because it's just not getting taken from you by the government. And typically in tax savings, you're talking about a passive return on investment of at least 30%, 30 to 50% a year, right? There's no other guaranteed return you can get. So I always say it's like, it's taxes, baby. You got to focus on taxes first, protect it, save as much money as you can on taxes, get into good investments. Um, and if find a good investment pipeline, if you don't have one already. And then if you do those three things, you're talking about taking your timeline to freedom from 15 years down to 10 years to uh, some people we've got them from, you know, 10 to two, because it's just, you know, they were making, they're paying so much in taxes and they're, they were like, I'm afraid to really have this money invested. And we're like, oh my God, here, we'll pencil this out for you real quick. In two years, you're going to be able to retire. And they're like, ah, I never thought I was going to be able to get there. Or I need another 15 years of working to be able to get there. It, it, yeah. It blows my mind. Like, I guess, cause we're more on this other side that the average American just doesn't understand yet. Um, and it's good. We're doing podcasts like this cause people could go, wait a second. There's, you know, what is section 179? And I'm always learning something new and all this stuff. And it's like, wow, you know, there's, you can section 179 is, is a really good, uh, uh, tax code for, you know, to take advantage of, you know, with, automobiles and different things, you know, if it fits in the category, there's, you know, cost segregation. There's, I just learned of a different one. I didn't know from a guy I interviewed. He, he uh, has a, he does syndications and he takes out carbon dioxide out of natural gas and there's section 469. And it's just amazing. All these things that, you know, you, t you need a, you need a good CPA. You need people that understand these syndications and strategies, but they're just, they're ultimately game changers, you know, and they're, I have one of my good friends is a big syndicator and he's like, yeah, I made $4.2 million last year. And he said, I had 5.4 million between my, you know, and write-offs between my cost segregation and bonus depreciation. Right. So these guys are, these guys are legally not having to pay taxes by having all this write-off and, and they could push it down the road. They could 1031 exchange down the road, all these things. So it's, it's really fascinating. Um, I never thought I'd be interested in this, but to me, it's like, well, this is like, just as good as you know flipping a house i mean knowing this side of the world is so important and nobody nobody seems to really care right and luckily your your firm's out there but the majority of people just overlook like the biggest part of the whole equation and it's just it's amazing but i think it's scary right like if, if you told me that it's like well i could have like the promised land of like returns and all these like tax benefits like as a guy, a guy I was being the other day, it was very similar to what your buddy there, right? He's like making millions of dollars in commercial real estate. It was generating tons of cash inside of depreciation because he's buying like strip malls, right? And then he was giving me a peek behind the curtain of like, what does it take to actually go buy a strip mall behind having to like look at all the financials, look at all the discrepancies, look at all the different lease agreements they have, all the ins and outs of all the different ways that you can get uh, into a lot of trouble if you start having stores, anchor stores leave. And then all of a sudden, like you're deep in the hole and like all things happen. And I was like, wow, I spent three hours with them and my mind just about melted. And I was like, hey, is there like a course that I can take to be able to learn how to do this? He's like, no, nah, I had to homegrown and learn it over the course of like four or five years. And I was like, okay, great. So this is actually what's up, right? So if you're willing to commit all of the time that's into it and have a single point of focus, then you can get some of these like amazing things, right? But it's essentially at that point, it's like learning a whole new business. And saying like, cool, this is a business I'm going to run. And um, what my mission has really been on and what I think this is why I get excited about like what, what I create in life here is that you can have exceptionally better results than you can have like in the stock market. If you start looking at like what are good syndication investments to say, great, I'm going to put 50 or or $100,000 inside of like a carbon capture deal to offset my W-2 income because it's equipment depreciation instead of real estate depreciation. Or I'm going to buy like the same thing with like a gas station or, you know, how am I going to play a game with like certain pieces of real estate that I'm going to do with self-storage that are huge self-storage units that I'm I'm 100K of $50 million that's going into this deal between vetted operators with other people that are really serious and lots of communal underwriting happening. And that's my big, that's if I was going to be on a soapbox and be like screaming at people, it would be like, just do the easy stuff first 
And then if you can just learn how to do syndications, right, with your investments and get all these huge tax benefits from it and get your portfolio from like a 5% cash flow return to a 15 to a 20%, you're four times more effective. And then if you want to go learn a new business called like buying strip malls or whatever the case may be, then great. You'll get super wealthy because it's really difficult to do. And if you, when you figure it out, because it's totally figure outable, you'll become crazy wealthy, like into it. But you might ask the question first about like, how do I just get free, right? Is there a way to just get free and out of the I need money game to ask yourself like, well, what do I really want? Do I really want a private jet or do I really want to spend three months in Bali? Or do I really want to go on to like a vacation with my family? And then life becomes about choices instead of having to come about like, I need more stuff for the sake of having stuff so I can feel that I'm safe and that eventually I'll get to some place where I'll start living. Right. Um, so like that, that's my soapbox bit. Yeah. <laughs> the speech on it. No, I agree a hundred percent. And I think I'm like, just thinking about like this doctor right now, that's got, you know, he, he's done, he or she's done really well. Uh, you know, from a, from a business standpoint of making money, they've saved up, you know, they could have saved a lot more or I wouldn't say saved, invested a lot more, but, but they had, you know, they, they didn't have any strategies and they're listening to this right now. And they're like, okay, this is like, I mean, I think to me, if I had the dry powder, I wish I had in my bank right now, the ultimate for me is peace of mind. Meaning I've got my, my corporate veil or whatever you want to call it, my structure set up and I have a couple billion bucks and those are my employees. Right. And instead of me having to think about operating like a, a multifamily property, to me, the ultimate leverage is to invest that capital with a syndicator that's got a proven track record in an asset class that I feel comfortable with investing in. And really the onus is on the syndicator to keep their track record stellar, right? And so they've done 15 other syndications and they've all had success. You know, obviously there's, nothing's ever perfect. There's problems, there's economy things, there's COVID. But if you have a couple million bucks and you can implement these cost strategies and then get your money working from a higher standpoint of returns, and then also with these syndications have uh, cost segregation and stuff that most people don't even know about, it's like not only are you getting that 15 or 20% return, you're getting the, that tax savings, which is like, so really your returns are could be much higher by, the, by this whole crystal ball. And I think that's how people amplify their wealth. By any structure, just hugely right. Like the clients that we work with, like our typical like one two punch onto it. It's like first thing we're going to do is look at how do we set up a looking at private foundation. Is it because a private foundation you can take thirty percent of your top line income from any source, whether you're W two or self employed, you can push it into this private foundation, and the private foundation essentially gets to invest, do self directed investments with it. All the gains are tax free because it's held inside of a foundation, and then you can grow your wealth tax-free and and save money on the taxes. So we had a doctor that came in, my uh, husband and wife making about a million bucks a year, paying about 300K in taxes. Uh, and so we're like, great. Well, you can put up to like uh, $300,000 of your money into the private foundation. You're going to automatically save just in year one. By doing that, you're going to save $100,000 in taxes because, because you have less taxable income. So here's hundred K you're going to save in taxes. Now of, of the money that we're going to like go back into invest, we have deals that are like 180% bonus depreciation. So, okay, great. So you have $200,000 left in uh, taxable income for this year. So what we're going to do is we're going to invest 150 K uh, into uh, this, this type of deal. I think it was a carbon capture deal. And that gave them almost $250,000 in, in write-offs that they could use for it. And pretty soon they're at a pretty dang close to 0% tax bracket because they had all of the tax benefits that are coming off of it. And the carbon capture deal was paying them 25% return when they were used to getting zero returns because they just had their money in the stock market. So they're actually getting zero cash flow. And now they're getting like passive income from the cash flow and being able to see like, oh my God, just by doing this, now I took all the money I was paying in taxes. Now I have it in an investment that's paying me 25%. And I'm also growing my wealth tax free to a large extent into it. So these are like, these are non subtle changes once you understand like the game of saving money on taxes and how to properly use investments. Um, 
it's just previously, I think that it's, it's most people get afraid of like what to do and they don't really know who to, um, who to turn to or just to want to take action. Cause it's just, I think part of human nature, right? If we're, if we're not sure our, our normal standpoint is to do nothing. And when we do nothing, right, we sit on cash and we think cash is safe, except for the fact that inflation is eight or 9%. So there is no safety besides taking action. But that also means you have to butt up against something that's a little bit fearful. But what you do is, is you start getting educated and being educated with people that have gotten where you want to go in life, have done it for themselves, have already helped other people do it. My ex personal experience is you just follow those people, do exactly what they tell you to do, and you're going to do really, really well. And at some point, you're going to master whatever the skill set they have, and then you can start being creative on your own, right? But until that point, just find people that have what you want that have helped done it for themselves, have helped other people do it. And if you do exactly what they say, you will have whatever they have, whether it's private jets, yachts, a great family, amazing adventures and vacations in life. It doesn't matter, right? Like that's just the secret to life, you know, <laughs> that nobody ever taught us as kids. It's like, it's so easy to actually do it this way. I love it. Hi, this is Bo Eckstein, host of the Investor Financing Podcast. Are you a real estate investor with properties and you're trying to figure out how to refinance or grow your existing real estate business? Need some clarity and a game plan for moving forward? I'm offering a free strategy call where we dive deep on your real estate investing goals. I'll help you come up with a strategic finance plan that will help you get to where you want to go. Whether you've got a portfolio of 30 properties or you're starting out with your first property, I have a framework that has helped many investors grow. If you're interested, book a call below in the Calendly link. I think I think we've delivered so much value in this, you know, 30 plus minutes that we could stop right here. I think anybody that's listening or watching this in the future, uh, depending if you're on iTunes or watching this on YouTube, um, if you're, you know, if you're intrigued to learn more, I'm sure you have. They can go to your website. They can book like a, a strategy sure. call with one of your yeah. advisors. And they could probably, you could probably go over your situation and say, and they could give you some, hey, we could probably do this and this and this, and this is what, they probably create a little roadmap for you. And so you're going to get a lot out of that strategy call. Uh, is that how you kind of work at first? Yeah, initial intake we actually call? give a people a full look under the hood. And so, well, before anybody gives us a dollar, we'll actually diagram out, like, here's what your asset protection structure should look like. Here's actually how much money you'll save on taxes to about a 90 to 95% level of accuracy before we really dive into the details. We can we have tools that allow us to be able to uh, estimate what that's going to be, um, and then also like taking a look at what the portfolio is looking like and what could it, if you shifted in the portfolio, how would it impact the taxes? Our piece is that we give everybody a look under the hood before we're going to ask you for a bunch of money, right? Because every other firm that we could find is like, hey, it's ten thousand dollars. We're not going to tell you anything about your tax situation. That's just to get us to start looking at it. And we took an opposite approach, which is, can we give actually all the information up front? for free just by having to say, cool, this is how we're going to build credibility in this relationship into it. And it's going to be so good that when we ask for money, uh, like the end of it, that people are going to say, great, yeah, I want you to do this. And this totally makes sense. And it's cost justified. And as I said before, it's everybody that's come in for us, we save every single person a double digit amount in their taxes every year and the tax savings pay for everything else that we do. So the way we look at it is it's cost neutral. We give all the information free upfront I mean, what more could you possibly want inside of a relationship by like, all right, just, just, just listen, just listen to what I have to share with you. And I was like, it'll be amazing for you. I guarantee it. I love it. Guys, this was a, a bunch of nuggets. Like I hope you watch this again and just really take action. I think the key is taking action and understanding that there are, there's a whole nother world that you may not know about. And I'm always, you know, like the, the carbon capture, I just learned about that. I didn't understand. I think it's section one or 469 or something like that. But like that just opened my mind. Like, yes, there's ways if you're a high paid W2 or 1099 that you can offset that, you know, by investing in certain things. It's all out there. People are always complaining about taxes and this and that. But like, honestly, if you just know the right people and and get in front of them, they're going to explain how this all works. You don't need to, you don't need to go read all the tax codes, but it's all available for you. So like, I used to be like, oh, taxes, this and that. But when I really thought about it, I go, you know what? The people that educate themselves get, or at least get around the right people, they're not paying that much in taxes because they're, you know, they're look, 
they're opening their mind enough to figure out who I should who I should go talk to, right? The other people are just like, hey, I'm just in this hamster wheel and I'm going to keep doing that. It's just amazing. But hopefully, this podcast enlightens people today to like take action. Where where can people go to um, schedule this strategy? Yeah, best thing to do is just go to royallegalsolutions.com and like on that page. There's a place where you can just go ahead and book uh, a meeting directly, right? So it'll take you like 10 seconds. I think everybody should go there. Just go ahead and book a meeting. That's where we start the process of figuring out what's the content. I got like thousands of hours of videos. I got over 10 books. I have so much content that's out there to just give away all the information for free. Um, but to do that, like we need to know like, who are you? What kind of challenges are you coming in with? So we can know what stuff do you need to read to be able to get educated so that way you can be confident in whatever the course of action is that's going to be recommended to say, okay, cool, that makes sense, right? Because if you're not educated, nothing's going to make sense. You're not going to do anything, right? And we're about people that want to do stuff. Also, gonna, they're going to see a video on royallegalsolutions.com, which walks through the entire the team, the whole experience, all the strategic approaches. It's the, the view of here's everything that you would need to know uh, to be able to say, hey, this is a quality relationship. Looks like they have strategic insights. Here's the strategic insights uh, applied to particular situations to see what the impacts are. Um, and that's really that's really it. So I would just say everybody go to royallegalsolutions.com, watch that video, schedule a meeting, um, start the relationship into it. There's no cost to get educated on everything that I shared here today. That's why we give everything away for free. We organize it all inside of uh, online materials to make it as easy as possible for you to get up to speed. Awesome. Thank you so much. This was really good. Enjoyed it a lot. And I always, I, I always tell people I do the podcast because it's a different selfish reasons. I'm always learning, right. And it's expanding my mind. So not only do I like to, you know, provide content for everybody that's watching this, but it's like, this is where else am I going to get the education I do from having this podcast? Cause I can get people like Scott on, I can ask questions and figure out like, what are, what are the other successful people doing out there? Right. And that's how you just continue to learn. So thank you so much, Scott. Appreciate it. This was a great episode. My man. Thanks for having me on, brother. Hey guys, Bo Exine here. If you enjoyed what you saw, please subscribe to this channel. We talk all things financing. I've been in the lending industry for over 20 years and I'm happy to answer your questions and provide great content.